Live from the 24-hour tracking center, this is a winter weather alert. And good afternoon again, everybody. Brian Sterling along with Susan Shaw. We're outside here as we start off our 430 half hour of our special weather presentation. Ellen can be seen over at WOTV4. We should add that. It is quite cold. The snow is starting to come down here in Grand Rapids, and we are feeling the blast of this winter weather. <laughs> we definitely are. Take a look outside right now here in downtown Grand Rapids. You can see the wind picking up, and the, the snow is fine, but it's just it's chilly, and it's coming down quick, so yeah. we know it's going to accumulate. Things are expected to get worse throughout the night, of course, so that's going to cause some problems throughout the area, but we're watching the storm come across the lake and take over West Michigan right now. It's snow Knowing, but you know we really haven't seen the worst of it as of yet. It's the whipping wind though that's really expected to make travel conditions tricky, particularly as it gets dark along the lake shore. Here's a live look at traffic conditions right now. No major problems out there right now to report to you. We're going to take you live to the streets in just minutes. We do have team coverage for you on this storm tonight. We're showing you how road crews are getting ready and what it looks like out at the lake shore and how this cold will be impacting just about everyone. But as we start with the track of the storm, we're going to go back inside tonight with the uh, meteorologists Bill Stephan and Kyle Underwood working hard in the 24-hour tracking center. Guys? Yeah, hi. How you doing? How do we get them to go outside? Isn't that kind of a, you know, usually it's us out there in the cold and snow. Hey, I tell you what, we've got a lot of snow on the way here for this evening. That means tough travel. Let's take a look at Storm Track Live. Everybody picking up on the snow. You can see the darker areas of blue, which have shot all the way east of Lansing at the current time. So when does this all stop? We will answer that question in about 10 minutes. Okay, Kyle, thank you. Not everyone can avoid being out in this treacherous weather. No, 24 hour news. Joe LaFerge is live outside of Spectrum Butterworth with the uh, ER and that part of the story, Joe. Yeah, good afternoon, Brian. Sue, so, you know, uh, we're talking about the first responders, the paramedics and EMTs, the firefighters, the police officers. They're the ones that can't avoid this weather. They're the people sent to accidents like this one at 76th Street near Broadmoor this afternoon. And the victim in this case had some sort of medical emergency that caused her to go off the road and hit the tree. We don't know her condition right now, but it brought out a large emergency response. Uh, this was before the snow hit, but the temperatures had already started to drop. Emergency crews do know how to dress for this kind of weather. But remember, it is not just exposure to the elements, to the cold, that they have to worry about. Obviously, fire on the fire side, water and cold weather just don't mix. Makes things really dangerous. Um, everything gets coated from the ladders they climb on to, you know, the surface we're walking on, everything. They also rely on a, a lot of mutual aid. Uh, in the fire department's case, if they get a fire, they bring in a lot of outside crews so they can rotate through and try to keep uh, as many people warm at a time as possible, but still do the job. And a big key here, though, to the dressing part of it is layers, lots of layers. They really lay it on, if you will, to make sure that uh, they can stay warm in these conditions. Live in Grand Rapids, Joe LaFerge, 24-Hour News 8. It's tough to be out there, Joe. Thank you so yeah. much. We appreciate their dedication sure. and yours. Thank you. Well, let's send it over now to Elisa McElrath for a check of our traffic. What are you seeing out there, Elisa? It's really slow going on northbound 131. And a live look now in Kalamazoo. They're starting to see the snow, and if you live in that area, it'll be a little lighter, but you'll see a few inches. Here's what it looks like on storm track radar right now. Let's take a look over here. Look at all this blue. This just <laughs> all over the big screen. Let's send it on over to storm teammates. Kyle Underwood in the tracking center. He's watching all of this closely. Kyle. Uh, we're not talking about record totals. In fact, this will not go down in, in history as one of Grand Rapids biggest storms ever, of course, but it's going to be noteworthy this week. There's no question about that. And welcome back. We are monitoring things along the lakeshore this afternoon and storm teammates Ellen Baca normally working uh, in uh, the comfy confines of the weather center. She's headed out to the big lake and has a live report from the streets. Hey, Ellen. Hey, it is brutal out here. I mean, you step outside for just a second and any part of your exposed skin feels like fire. Actually, the, the snow crystals almost sandblast you when the gust really gets you. Uh, when we left Grand, Rap Grand Rapids, the conditions weren't awful. Um, they were steadily deteriorating, though, about an hour ago. I would say visibility was about a mile, and once we got into Grand Haven itself, visibility was a quarter of a mile. Here by the lake shore, it's not even that. I would say that you can only see a good 30 to 50 feet, and that's because of the blowing and the falling snow. 
Now, along with this, we have the wind chill, which we've been talking about quite extensively, but it's really rough. I had to run outside with my gloves outside for just a moment, and my fingers are still on fire because of it. And we were actually trying to take a few pictures to send back to you guys, but our phones were shutting down because it was so cold. So that just gives you a little bit of a visualization as to how chilly and how treacherous it is out here. Now, two days ago, I was out at South Haven just to kind of look at the waves myself. And there are about 8-foot waves building to 12-foot waves coming in uh, in the channel. And I just saw a picture on my way out here today um, where it was completely frozen over, tons of ice. So if I get a break here, I'm going to try to brave the weather conditions and get as close as I can safely to the water and see how far the ice extent is. We're right now near where the Grands River empties out into Lake Michigan, and that itself looks like it's getting close to freezing over completely. So very dangerous. We're not seeing a lot of cars on the road anymore, and hopefully everyone has gotten to where they've needed to get to safely. All right, Ellen, stay safe out there. Thank you for that live report. Sue? Thank Boy. you. Okay, Ellen, thank you. Visibility very low out that way. Roads incredibly slick. Police and road commission leaders are telling you if you don't have to drive somewhere, stay off the roads. Safer for everybody and, of course, yourself. Joining me live on the phone from one county that's expected to really get hit hard over the next few hours, that's Muskegon County. And the Muskegon County Road Commission Managing Director, Ken Hulka, joining us now on the phone. Ken, what are you seeing out there? Oh, I'm seeing <laughs> a lot of wind and a lot of blowing snow. It. What's your plan of attack at this point? How do you uh, plan to get to the streets? I know the salt's not working that well because it's so cold. Are you using any sand? Oh, yes. Yep. We're, we're using, uh, um, uh, well, it's a sand-salt mixture, uh, but mostly it, it is sand. Well, this cold weather blast reminds us that we need to take precautions to stay healthy and safe. Eva Gary Cooper was at the Kent County Health Department with some basic reminders. With frigid temperatures this week and the single digits, there are things we need to do to protect ourselves. I'm here with Lisa LaPlante from the Kent County Health Department with some things we need to know, tips that we don't always think about just to sort of stay safe. That's right. You know, a lot of kids are going to be wanting to play outside in the snow, and it doesn't take long for frostbite to set in. So we want people to be thinking about frostbite. We want people to be thinking about respiratory issues, especially for kids who have asthma or for older adults. And we also want people to be thinking about their friends and neighbors. Make sure that they're checking on them, make sure they're doing okay in these frigid temperatures as well. Some people use alternative means to heat themselves. What do they need to be wary of? You know, you really have to be careful if you're using any kind of heaters. You want to make sure you're following manufacturer's instructions. Um, this time of year, people tend to lose power, so if they use a generator, make sure they're using it outside the home and make sure, again, you're following the instructions so that you're not letting that carbon monoxide get into your house. We recommend every home have carbon monoxide detectors just to be on the safe side. And don't use portable equipment, portable um, stoves and things like that within the home because those do give off carbon monoxide and that can be deadly. Good information to have just to help stay safe, stay healthy, and stay warm this winter season. We'll have a lot of this information on our website at woodtv.com. I'm Eva Aguirre Cooper, connecting with Community. Okay, Eva, thank you. We have a link with these health tips on our community page at woodtv.com. Now let's send it back outside to Brian Sterling for a look at what's coming up in our next half hour. Brian? Yeah, Sue, the snow is still coming down. The wind is picking up and it is quite frigid outside, bitter cold. It's all leading to some very dangerous conditions. Coming up, we're going to get you caught up on what's happening out on the roads. Next at 5, we have live team coverage all over our viewing area. And of course, up to the minute tracking as the snow comes down, it's just a minute away. Stay with us as our team coverage on this winter storm continues on your 24-hour news 8 at 5.